Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the AW189 is certificated by the FAA. Honeywell releases its 2015 Global Helicopter Forecast, and Flight Safety provides Honda Aircraft Simulator. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. It's going to be a great week for Rotorcraft as ATI gets started in Orlando. We should have confirmation today of new aircraft from Airbus Helicopters, as well as progress reports from Bell, MD Helicopters, Sikorsky, Robinson, Enstrom, and a number of others. But there's some excitement at HAI from the folks at Finn Mechanica Augusta Westland, who've confirmed FAA validation of the EASA certification for their AW189 medium twin engine helicopter. Deliveries and operations are therefore to begin shortly with customers in the United States. The validation was received following US flight testing activities that took place in early 2015 and positions the AW189 for long range and high capacity requirements for offshore, SAR, and corporate transport operations. Following EASA certification in early 2014, aircraft have already been delivered to customers in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, including Bristow, Westar Aviation Services, LCI, Gulf Helicopters, and Bel Air. 150 units have been sold, including framework contracts and options. In its 17th annual turbine-powered civil helicopter purchasing outlook, Honeywell Aerospace produced a detailed report that forecasts steady global helicopter demand for the next five years. Overall, five-year demand for turbine-powered civil helicopters remains steady versus the 2014 five-year forecast, with moderate improvement in new helicopter purchase plans reported, offsetting the short-term uncertainty of large fleet operators in the face of lower energy prices and fluctuating market currencies. The report provides a forecast by regions of the world and by the category of helicopter. The report said that operators who intend to purchase a helicopter within the next five years noted that the age of their current aircraft, contracted replacement cycle, and warranty expiration were all key reasons for their decision. For those surveyed, make and model choices for their new aircraft are strongly influenced by range, cabin size, performance technology, upgrades, and brand experience. After the break, Honda Jet receives its simulator. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Honda Aircraft Company announced that the first Honda Jet flight simulator has been delivered, and it's currently being installed at the company's world headquarters in Greensboro, North Carolina. The full motion Level D simulator was developed in partnership with Flight Safety International and will be located at the Honda Jet Training Center on the campus of Honda Aircraft. The Honda Jet and its advanced flight deck were designed for simple intuitive operation while achieving a high degree of safety. To enhance its state-of-the-art safety features, Honda partnered with Flight Safety International to develop the simulator and training program. The simulator was constructed and assembled at Flight Safety's manufacturing facility in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma with the collaboration of Honda Aircraft. It'll be certified to meet both the FAA and European Aviation Safety Agency regulations. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the most interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. <music> 
March 7th is scheduled for the stop of EAA's B-17 Flying Fortress Aluminum Overcast at Lakeland, Florida. The event is sponsored by EAA Chapter 454. Airplane rides and tours are available. If you're building an airplane and your concept of electrical wiring looks like a bowl of spaghetti, the EAA Sport Air Workshop for Electrical and Avionics Wiring in Dallas, Texas on March 7th and 8th may be the answer for you. The evening of March 11th provides you the opportunity to meet with AOPA President Mark Baker at the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. The Unmanned Aerial Vehicle West Symposium is being held March 11th and 12th at the Wyndham San Diego Bayside in San Diego, California. This major event includes both military and civilian issues and products regarding UAVs. After these messages, Whip Air in Leesburg, Florida now services Twin Otters. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Viking Air Limited has named Whip Air's Leesburg, Florida Service Center as a Viking Factory Indoor Service Center. This allows Whip Air to support the Twin Otter fleet and the new Viking Series 400 Twin Otter. Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority has lifted its order to ground some Robinson R-44 helicopters in that country, following a fatal accident in New Zealand. It was discovered the accident did not involve a failure of the main rotor blade. Pratt & Whitney unveiled its new Middleton, Connecticut production facility to support production of the PW-1100G JM engine for the Airbus A320neo and the F-135 engine for the F-35 Lightning II. The new facility will allow increased production. The International Helicopter Pilot Organization, Twirly Birds, has announced the 2015 recipient of the prestigious Les Morris Award as Miss Nancy Miller Livingston Stratford. Nancy received her helicopter rating in 1947 after having been an airplane pilot since 1940. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The Pilots' Bill of Rights II legislation introduced last week by Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe, along with companion legislation in the U.S. House, contains a key provision backed by the MBAA. Last year, key MBAA personnel met with Inhofe's office regarding the addition of language that will ensure defendants in an FAA action have an opportunity to prepare a proper defense. The resulting provision specified in the Pilots' Bill of Rights II legislation would require the FAA to hand over the enforcement report when serving emergency orders and upon request in all other cases. The bill also states actions the FAA may not take should the agency fail to provide timely notifications to individuals facing enforcement action at the start of the investigation. The bill would prohibit the agency from moving forward with any enforcement action should the FAA fail to provide such notifications. 
MBAA's president and CEO Ed Bolin said in part, quote, we are particularly pleased that our concerns in this area are reflected in this new legislation, and we look forward to doing what we can to help move these important bills into law, end quote. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, March 3rd. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside our normal deadlines. Join us every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.